This tutorial is brought to you by Hey, what's up guys? My name is Josh Inobakure and welcome to Olufemi Tutorials. Transitions are crucial in maintaining the cinematic flow for your piece. Now guys, check this edit out. If It's so boring, right? If you can dream. When I edit fast-paced artistic projects, I prefer every shot to lead seamlessly into the next shot. It's through those seamless transitions that I determine the quality of the piece. I have five really cool transition methods that I've discovered through the process of just trial and error. Blurring speed ramping, offset overlays, if you can dream. tail end flickers, and rushers. You can dream. And the last rule is all of these previously mentioned visual effects need to be complemented with associated audio effects. Master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim. All right, check this out, guys. We're going to learn about using the directional blur as a way to transition from shot to shot. Um, this is an effect that I call blurring because you can technically use any type of blur to do this, but I believe that the directional blur is the best type of blur because you can get these really cool streaks. I want to kind of give you an idea of what um, you're looking at before I go into the effect. But um, what you're looking at is you're looking at two clips. You're looking at this clip right here and then you're looking at this clip right here. Um, now, um, this clip right here is the effect. Um, what I have is I have a completely separate clip. This clip is completely different from this clip. And on this clip, I have the directional blur on the clip. Um, the, uh, as you can see, the directional blur is on this clip. Um, and it's keyframed from 74 to 0. 74 um, means that the, that this clip is so blurred that literally this clip right here just registers as streaks. And most of this clip you're seeing right here is actually the clip on the bottom. It's only these streaks that are this clip right here. Now as the keyframe goes to zero, you're able to now to register um, this clip right here. Um, now this clip, if you remember, um, what screen does, the screen blending mode basically changes everything that's black in the clip to transparent. So what it essentially does is it allows you to overlay two clips on top of each other. So what you're looking at right here is actually a combination of this clip and this clip. Um, cool. So what I want to do first, guys, is I want to, um, I want to blind this track. If you remember from the, fr from the, the Adobe Premiere tutorials, um, there's a way to blind this track. So this track right here is now blinded. You cannot see this. This thing is invisible. You're seeing the only tracks you're seeing right now at this point is you're seeing this track and you're seeing this track. Now I'm gonna play through all this. Okay, now I'm gonna scrub through so you can see a little bit more clearly. So this is how what the clip looks like without that blur transition. It's a simple cut. So um you can kind of see, you see the them, uh, you see him throwing the ball, and then it cuts to the reverse shot of him catching the ball. So, I mean, it's a cool shot, right? But it doesn't really have that high, high that fast paced, high impact feel that I like in my edits. So, what I did was I said, okay, I'm going to add a, I'm going to overlay a shot on top of this shot to kind of um, create a really cool transition between this shot and this shot. So what I did, I'm gonna unblind this, bam, is I overlaid another shot. This is just another random shot of this guy running, you can see. So what I did was I, I cut this shot into two parts. Um, right here, you can see, um, is this guy running, right here. Um, and this is, this is, wait, this is, uh, this, this clip right here that you can see overlaid onto the bottom clip which is basically everything else you see underneath him and what you can see in this part of the clip is that um, 
I do not have any directional blur. Of course, my blending mode's on screen so that you can see both clips at the same time, this clip and the clip underneath, but there's no blending mode yet. But look what I did. I went over and I cut the clip here. And so at this point, I'm gonna click onto this clip now. Um, it's the same clip as this clip, except as you can see, it has a directional blur on it. And I keyframed this directional blur. If you remember, again, from the Adobe Premiere tutorial series, um, you have the ability to keyframe effects. Keyframing is changing an effect over time. So right now, I have um, the blur length. The blur length is basically determining the intensity of the blur effect. And the blur direction is determining the, um, the angle of the blur. So if my blur was at zero, the angle would be up and down. The blur is at 24 degrees, so the angle is kind of sideways, as you can see. And my blur length is at 79, which is a pretty high intensity, and then no blur would be zero. So right now it's at 79, as you can see. These, uh, you can actually go back. This is what it look. This is what this clip's like. This clip looks like without the blur, and this is what this clip looks like with the blur. As you can see, that this top clip basically just consists of this guy in the white jersey running. So as soon as I put my blur on this clip, he basically this clip literally just changes to a bunch of lines. It's basically not even distinguishable and the only thing you can distinguish at this point is the clip underneath which is the field and these two guys right here you can see um, is what this clip consists of so um, now check this out as I go further in this clip you can see that my blur length is slowly keyframing down to zero cool now right now the blur length is at zero look, look what you have here he has finally um, turned back into um, a regular person, he's not blur anymore, and now you can see both clips overlaid on each other um, pretty regularly like you could before. So basically what happened is, if you remember, I'm going to blind this again, hopefully you guys are keeping track, this is what these two clips looked like without, you know, this whole directional blur effect on a clip that I added later. Um, this is what the two clips. The, this is what these two clip bottom clips look like by themselves. Then when I am going to unblind this track, and you can now see that I added this other track with the blur effect on this part and without the blur effect on this part. And what I did was I just it just added a really cool transition in between these two clips. Check, take a look again. Take a look again. Cool. So, of course, I added associated sound effects to even emphasize the effect even more. But what it did is it just created a really cool transition. You no longer just see, you know, the field and the past, but you see this really cool run that almost kind of just like tells a, it, it, it kind of just, uh, I don't know, it, it kind of just gives a, a, a really cool added perspective. Um, it almost looks like that he's like, you, it's almost like you can see both angles at the same time and you can see him running towards the ball. <laughs> And you can see the the flip angle at the same time of him throwing it. That I, I don't know. You, you can you can you can put your own story to it, but in in reality, I just thought the effect looked really cool. So um, that is basically how um, this directional blur transition takes place. Um, uh, this transition that I call blurring. Um, literally, all it is, guys, is it is keyframing the directional blur on a clip and um, then putting that clip on top of two other clips that you are actually cutting in between. So you have two main clips that you're cutting in between and then you have a additional clip that you put on top of these two main clips just to add in that transition and that transitional that additional clip has a keyframed a directional blur on top of it. Cool? Awesome. Um, feel free to just mess around with directional blur. You don't have to necessarily use it in this way. Um, but it's just a really cool effect that I would continue to use in all your videos. Um, I'm going to play this whole sequence, sequence and you can kind of see some other places I used it. Cool. You could see it um, in a few other sequence, in a few other places as well. You could see it there. Um, you could see it right there. Um, so just have fun with this, guys. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and continue to the next video.